first off, here, all of this is the face. All that is the face. This whole thing here is your face. It contains other body parts. This is usually the first thing someone sees on you, your face. Now, think about it. What phrases do you have with face? Do you know any phrasal verbs or any idioms that involves your face? Well, I do. Just in case you don't, let's go over some. So one phrase we have with the face is to face off. To face off. Okay? I wrote it in the text section, to face off. What does it mean to face off? Well, to face off means to basically compete with something or someone. So let's say um, you have a favorite football team. Uh, let's say you're from Moscow and your favorite football team is the Spartak football team. So let's say the Spartak football team tomorrow is going to play against the Vladivostok team. That means tomorrow Spartak will face off against the Vladivostok team. They're going against each other versus. That's when you face off. You basically go one team or person against another team or person. That is to face off. It does not mean to remove your face. And it does not mean to move anyone else's face. It means to compete with each other one or one or team versus team. That is to face off, okay? That's to face off, all right? We all got it? Everyone here? Yes, there's a 100 of you. That is to face off. So I'll write it here, just in case you didn't see it. That was face off, to go against one-on-one -on -one or a team against a team. Another one we have with face is when someone tells you to face it. What does it mean when someone tells you to face it? They go, just face. Mm. Screen going crazy again. What does it mean when someone tells you just face it? Yes, exactly. Who got it? Somebody got it. It was Ivan. Yes, it means to deal with it. It means to basically stop lying to yourself and deal with the reality. So sometimes you have to face things you don't want to face. Like maybe, um, let's say maybe you're, uh, uh, you're an adult man and you're only, I don't know, 120 centimeters tall. You're not very tall. But every day you complain, oh, I'm short. I wish I wasn't short. I'm so short, 120 centimeters. I want to be taller. A good friend will tell you, hey, face it. Make the best of it and just live your life because there's nothing you can do about it. Face it means basically realize the truth and deal with it, okay? That's face. Next, let's go. All right, smatrite. I'm going to point at a body part. Now I want you to tell me what it is. Okay, you guys ready? It's kind of going to be a race. I'm going to see who's first. Yes, that is the eyebrow. That is the eyebrow, Yvonne. Yes, that is the eyebrow. Eyebrow. Oh, second new eyebrow. And the eyebrow is, um, is an important body part. Some girls don't even really have eyebrows, and they have to draw on their eyebrows. Now, your eyebrows, you usually have two. Some people have one. Some people have one eyebrow going on, and it does this kind of thing here. That's called a unibrow, a unibrow. So you, we have people with regular eyebrows. Some people write as one word, some people write as two. But then you have some people with a unibrow. A unibrow is when it's one like this. That is a unibrow. So um, if you have a unibrow, well, what some people with unibrows do is they get the middle shaved, and it's then they have two eyebrows, like most people, okay? So these are eyebrows, but when you have one, it's called a unibrow. <laughs> people are laughing. Some people have that. It, it just happens, you know? Some people have it, but it's nothing to just just rip the middle part off, which is what most people do. Then you have Caucasian people. Yeah, Caucasian people, like I have Caucasian friends and stuff, and I realized one thing about Caucasian people is that they tend to grow a lot of hair on their bodies. Us black people, we don't have much hair. Like I don't have any hair on my legs. There's no hair on my legs, none at all. There's no hair on my back. None, of, I just don't have it. 
And most people in my family don't have it. We don't grow a lot of hair on our bodies. I don't know why. But no, not uni bra, uni brow. I don't know why, but it's just like that, okay? So next body part. Next one, okay? Hmm. Yeah, nose. That one was easy, nose. How about these two things? Nostrils. Damn, who is this? God damn, Yvonne. Yes, those are nostrils. Now, nostrils. Um, uh, If you know how to say this in your language, you can write it. But your nostrils are basically the two holes in your nose. Now, everybody has two nostrils. I've never seen anybody with one nostril, like, with this hair ripped. No, everyone has two nostrils. And not only that, there is a, a, a saying with the nostrils. And I can move mine. Some people can move their nostrils. But not only that, uh, I, I just don't see or hear anything. I know that he has begun because it comes. Oh, if you can't see or hear anything, you might have to change your settings. So I don't know what to tell that person. But when your nostrils are flared, nostrils are flared, flared, I'm writing. When your nostrils are flared, that means they're like this. People use that for one, two reasons. One, you could be angry. So like when they say, oh, his nostrils are flared, that can mean he's angry. So you guys know the animal, a bull? Let, let me find a bull for you guys. I'll find a bull. A bull is a, the animal with two big horn, two big horns. And when a, when a bull is known to get uh, angry, his nostrils flare. His nostrils get really big, and then he gets, uh, you know, angry, so I was going crazy. So, yeah, this is a bull. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our cowboy. Bro, what is that? Is that? Hey! Okay, see, that's the bull. A tip of see, now when bulls get angry, their nostrils the are known to flare. Like that. You know, you that's one reason why we say, oh, his nostrils are flaring. Bulls. His nostrils are flaring. That means he's angry, he's mad, you know, just like a bull. See how mad that bull is? That bull is mad. That bull is pissed off. And his nostrils are definitely flaring right now. Okay, excellent. Easy. Full stuff. All right, next one. Part, yeah, a lot of people don't like um, cow's husband. Yeah, basically. A lot of people don't like bullfighting, but hey, to each his own. Next one. How about How about these? No. Yes, cheeks. Cheeks, exactly. These are cheeks. And here's a question. How many cheeks on a person's body? How many cheeks on a person's body? Nope. Yes. Is that Yvonne again? God damn, Yvonne. You come here too much. I'm kidding. Yes, there's four cheeks on a person's body. There's one, two, and two on your butt. So they're actually all cheeks. It's scientific. They're all cheeks. One, two, and three, four. Down there, those are four cheeks in total. So everybody has four cheeks. Everybody. No matter how small your cheeks are, they're still cheeks, okay? So everybody has four cheeks. Now, the cheeks are uh, one of the body parts where... You know, your grandmother or your babushka likes to squeeze and she likes to play with it and all that stuff. Like, oh, little cutie, cute, cute, cute. You know, that's what people do no matter how old they are, no matter how old you are. When they're old, like babushka or grandmother, they love to just play with the cheeks on your face. They play with the cheeks on your face. I don't think they play with those other cheeks, but they definitely play with these, okay? Excellent. Who said 43 cheeks? Who has 43 cheeks? Only a really fat person, a really fat person can have 43 cheeks. You know, some people can have more than one of these things. Okay, cheeks. So let's move on. Let's keep going. How about this one? Ready? This one might be a little difficult. Yes, we have a new winner. Terminator. Yeah, oh, Terminator. Yes, that is the forehead. 
Now the forehead is a is an important part of your body. I can teach you guys a joke with this one. Uh, the forehead, which is here in Russian, is lob. The forehead is very interesting because where I'm from in America is common slang that when a girl has a big forehead, when her forehead is like really big, we call it a five head, a five head. So basically forehead kind of sounds like forehead, like the number four and head. That's what it sounds like. But if you know someone who has a big, like a very big forehead, you can call it a five head. That's what we do out here in uh, out there in New York. Like, oh, she got a five head. She got that five on her head. That's a five head, and that means a really big forehead. Okay, it's testa, testa in Portuguese. Oh, cruta. Five, yes, five head. Like she, her head's bigger than four. Like she's supposed to only have a, a four, but she got five. Sometimes six. If she got a six head, that's too much. That that's too much. It looks like the the big window of a car, like of a truck. You know, like the truck, the window. In front of the driver, that's what it looks like. It's crazy, all right? So that's forehead. Uh, now let's move on to, ready? All right, so my guys, ready? And not the hair, not the hair, not the hair. Yes, chin, chin. Way to go, Miriam. Yeah, oh, Miriam. Yes, that is your chin. Chin. Kanyechna. That is your chin. Now, the chin is a very hard bone the chin is uh it's something that um when you box you're supposed to keep your chin down so they don't uppercut you and not only that most people have one chin most people have one chin but there are some people who grow so big that they develop some kind of double chin as we call it when they get very big and fat they may get like more uh, fat here, and we call that a double chin. And when they do this, you can see more of the chin. That's called a double chin. I don't have a double chin, but some people have double chins, okay? You got to understand that. So if they say something like, I'm not into girls with double chins, that basically means they're not into fat girls, okay? That means they don't like fat girls. So that's, I have two. Well, yeah, you have two chins. Is I think I think when you're just heavy, when you're naturally big, you might have two chins because it's just how your body is spread out and how parts of your body is just affected by your size. Okay, so I have a friend, a friend here in Nova Sibis named Jason, and he has maybe three of them. I think three. Next one. Next one we're going to have. Let's see. Okay. Not the ear, not the ear, but this part right here. Only here. Where people get earrings, right here, just this part right here. Ah, no one knows this one. Oh, good, I picked one. Because I know you guys know ear, but this is different than ear. That is ear lobe. Uh, you can say ear flap. Oh, I wrote in the wrong place. It's earlobe. Now you can say you can say ear flap, but uh, I mean ear flap isn't bad. I've just never heard it because I understand that when you say ear flap, that makes perfect sense. But it's earlobe. So me, I have this earlobe pierced and this earlobe pierced. I have them both pierced. When it's pierced, that means it has a. It, Damn it. It means it has a hole in it. For example, see how I have an earring? I can put it in here because it's pierced. This earlobe's pierced. Ow. Goddamn. That's one. Or, ow, I could put it in the other earlobe because this earlobe is also pierced. That's two. So both of my earlobes are pierced. Now, mostly... Out here in Russia, most guys don't have any of their earlobes pierced. It's not common at all. Usually the girls have both, but then me, myself, I have both, which is weird. Cause, cause, it's because I'm from America. Where I'm from in America, it's common for guys to have both earlobes pierced. It's not that big of a deal, okay? So that's earlobe. Excellent. Next one. 
Next one we're going to get to. Look carefully. Yeah. Temple? No, no, no. Just this right here. Not, not, not the eyelash. No, not the eyelash. Ugh. Eyelid. Yes, the eyelid. Yes. When you close your eyes, eyelid. When you close your eyes, you're closing your eyelids. Your eyelids are basically what protects your eye when you're scared something's going to go in it. And it's also what, um, what makes things dark when you close them so you can't see. Those are your eyelids. They're what goes in front of your eyes when you're sleeping. Now, most people sleep with their eyelids closed. Some people sleep like this with their eyelids open. Some people sleep with their eyes open, and that's very creepy to me. I don't like when people sleep with their eye. No, these they're not eyelashes. We're doing eyelids. These right here. Okay? Those are your eyelids. Now, the eyelashes... The eyelashes, eyelashes, the eyelashes, this the hair, the riznitsa. Those are eyelashes, like th these hairs here. See, those are the eyelashes that you can see. Now, eyelashes and eyelids are different. This is the eyelash. This is the eyelid. Eyelash, ugh. eyelid. They're a team. Now, usually, here's a quick tip. In, um, in American cartoons, in American cartoons, we never, give the we never give the boy characters eyelashes. They don't get eyelashes. But in Russian cartoons, they get eyelashes. I'm going to show you. Pagadi. I'm going to show you this cartoon called New Pagadi. And in this cartoon of New Pagadi, it's confusing to me because they give the boy character eyelashes and they give him blush on his cheeks, like the red stuff. And for me, it's very confusing. Okay, wait, I'll show you when he comes. Not yet. Not yet. Where is he? Where is he? See, we have to find him. Right now, it's just wolf. Okay, here he is. Here he is, right. Wait, wait, wait for him. Wait, wait. Wait. See, that's him. He has eyelashes. They get it's a boy, but they give him eyelashes. So for me, he looks like a girl because in America we only give the girl character eyelashes. So it's very confusing for me. Man, why don't they show him more? Oh, there he is. And so I hope you guys saw it. He has eyelashes, and he has like the blush on his face and stuff, and the long eyelashes. It's just confusing to me, but. It's just a difference in our cartoons. In America, no, but in Russia, yes. It's just different cultures, and that's all that basically is. All right? Next. Let's move on. How do I close this thing? Excellent. Those are eyelashes. Now we're going to move on to the next one. How about these two, um, these two bones here? You can't really see mine, but they're bones like here. Yes, those are cheekbones. Those are cheekbones. Very good, Leia. Those are cheekbones. 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 Kanyetna. Now, cheek. You can't really see my cheekbones. You can't really see them. So, um, maybe you have them. Everyone has them, but it's not easy to see them. You understand? Usually, you can see cheekbones on models, on runway models. You guys are going to love this video. Uh, let's see. Face models. Let me find some models for you. And I found some face models. And let's see. Boja, 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 boja. Oh, wait. No, no. Let me do this. And cheekbones. Find somebody with nice cheekbones in the video for you. Okay. Now, this is a makeup tutorial, I guess, for girls about how to get very nice cheekbones. I don't think guys care too much about their cheekbones. At least my guy friends in New York are like, yo, my nigga, you got some nice cheekbones. Nah, not really. It's not too common. But yeah, see her, she's wearing makeup, and it makes her cheekbones show 
more than usual. So she's teaching her how to do it, how to highlight your cheekbone. See how you can see that? That's her cheekbone. She's cheating using makeup. She's definitely cheating, but yeah, she's showing you how to show them. Those are your cheekbones, all up in here, right? Excellente. It's really, it's really important for, if you want to be a model, it's important for you to have cheekbones or at least highlight your cheekbones. They're very, very important so you look skinny. I don't know if I'd say skinny, but so you don't look fat, basically. Models, runway models aren't supposed to be fat, so when you show your cheekbones, it makes you look thin, all right? Next one we're going to work on. Oh, uh, let's see. Hmm. I guess we're done with the face. Let's go to the hand. Let's go to the hand. Let's go, um, let's go here. Start off with this finger. This finger right here. This finger here. Nobody knows this finger, are you kidding me? There's 91 of you in here and no one knows this finger. The finger I'm holding. No, not forefinger. Pointer, yes. The pointer finger. That was Ivan again. Yes, that's the pointer finger. And we call it the pointer finger because we use this finger to point. And this is what pointing is. Right now, I'm pointing at you. Um, right now, I'm pointing at this juice. Uh, right now, I'm pointing at the Pringles. That's pointing. I believe it's ukazat, ukazatilne in Russian. But that's this thing. Most of us have two of them, and it's normal. Point the fingers. Prosta. Easy. Next one, we have this finger. This finger here. No one calls it forefinger. Yes, this is the pinky. It's the smallest finger you have. Now, how do people use their pinky fingers? Let me write pinky for you because it's a weird word. How do people use their pinky fingers? Well, for example, it's common in British culture that when you're drinking tea or something, in order to show that you have class or that you have manners or that you're just polite, you should drink whatever you're drinking with your pinky up like this. That's British manners. In America, we don't have that. We don't have that, but in Great Britain, it's very polite to drink and always have your pinky up when you're drinking. Why? I have no idea. They're British. You got to ask them why. So that's pinky. Moving on. Next one. How about this finger? Which, what finger is this finger? Oh, and you also use the pinky to make a promise. Yes. You also use the pinky to make a promise. But yes, this is ring finger. No, it's not funny yet. This is just the ring finger. Why is it called the ring finger? Because the ring finger is basically the finger in which they put the ring on when you get married. Now, I was married before, and I still don't remember which hand it is, whether it's, uh, uh, I think in Russia, it's the right hand. When you get married, they put the ring on your right hand on your right ring finger. In Russia, when, when a woman gets married, she has her, her ring on which finger? The ring finger on the right hand or the ring finger on the left hand? Right hand. Okay, yes, it's not unnamed. It's only unnamed in the Russian language. What the hell is that about? What the hell? But anyway, yes. So in Russia, when women get married, the ring goes on their ring finger on the right hand. In America, when women get married, the ring goes on the ring finger on the left hand. So Russia uses the right, America uses the left, just like that, okay? And for those of you who are not Russian, in the Russian language, they have, they, I don't know, they don't have a name for the finger. Actually, they have a name for the finger, but the name for the finger is no name. So they literally call the finger the no name finger. I don't know how it happened. And not only that, in the Russian language, uh, toes. Your toes are your fingers on your feet. In Russian, they call your toes fingers of the feet. They don't have a word for it. So it's very, very funny to me how Russian works with body parts. Very funny. All right, next one. 
Okay, I want you guys to look at this. Because not everyone has this body part or these body parts. Not everyone has them. I want to have to find a picture for you guys. But I know some people with amazing. They have these and it looks amazing. Especially some girls I know. It's, oh, it just looks amazing. Okay, let me find a picture. Let me save it. Now, some of us, we can have up to five of these on our body. Right now, I want to talk about the ones on the face. On the face, it's common to have up to three of these on your face, about three of them. Okay, so give me a second. I'm going to add the photo. Come on, photo. Bye bye, photo. Oh, boys and more. Give me a second. What in the world's going on here? Oh, bleach gear. Let me see. Oh, here we go. All right, okay. Now, Samantha, look at her face. Look at her face. And on her cheeks, you see one, you see two things on her cheeks. Does anyone see like those, the little indentations on her cheeks? In Russian, they call them yamachki. They call them yamachki. Yes, those are dimples. She has beautiful dimples. Those are dimples on her face. Exactly, dimples. You see one here, one there. Now, those are the basic dimples, the ones on your cheek. But there's another place you can have a dimple on your face. And some famous person named Ben Affleck is very, well, I don't have a picture of Ben Affleck. I don't feel like looking for one. But he doesn't have his dimple on his cheek. He has his dimple somewhere else. Somewhere else. He has it on his chin. And I'm going to show you an example of that kind of dimple right now. And this kind of dimple is common, I guess. It's common. Davai. Excellent. Okay. Load, load. And boom. He has his dimple right here on his chin. That's also a dimple. Okay. It's also a dimple. You can, some of you have it. That's cool. I wish I had it. I think more girls would like my face if I had it. But I don't have any at all. So those are dimples, okay? So we discovered three dimples just now. You have one on your cheek. You can have one on the other cheek. You can have one here. But there's another part of the body where you can have two more dimples. This part of the body, it's the sexiest dimples uh, usually uh, a person can have. So I'm going to show you a picture. Some of you might know where it is. Okay, I don't want to show too crazy of a picture here. Okay, this one's fine. My first girlfriend had these dimples, and I, I, actually, I absolutely just love them. I love them so much. Whenever I saw them, I went crazy. Uh, let's see. Secundo. Let me upload. Okay. Sorry, I know the pictures actually take longer for me to do than the videos. That's just how the program is. Those are also dimples. The lower back uh, dimples, those are also known as dimples. The lower back. So you can have... Uh, basically five dimples in total on your body. Some people have five, some people have zero. But those are the five places in which you can have dimples. Anywhere else is not really a dimple. You don't have dimples in your arm. No, 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 no. Those aren't dimples. Those are different things. But when it comes to these five that I showed you, yes, those are dimples, okay? Excellent. Simple. We got it. Great. Now let's move on. Now let's go into other body parts. We still have a finger left. We still have a finger left. We have this one. Which finger is this? Yes, it is the thumb. This is the thumb. You have two thumbs. And when we do this in America, we call it, we call it thumbs up. This is called thumbs up when you do this in America. Like you're saying, awesome, I like, cool. This is called thumbs down when it's like, no, not cool, I don't like. And when you want to hitchhike, let me spell thumb for you guys. And let's say you want to catch a ride. You wanna, you don't have a car, you don't have money for the train, or you don't have money for the bus, or there is no bus. If you want to get on in someone else's car and have them drive you somewhere, you do this with your thumb in the direction that you're going. That's called hitchhiking. That's with your thumb, and it's called hitchhiking, just like that. Hitchhiking can be very dangerous, especially for women. But hey, some people do it, so um, 
I wouldn't advise it to you if you're not a, an adult, like 18 or over. But other than that, uh, you know, hey, got to be careful out there, okay? That's your thumb. Now there's one more finger. And then there's this finger, this one here, uh, this finger. Anyone know this one? Yes, it is the middle finger. Sredni Pavits. Yes, it is the middle finger. Now, of course, the middle finger is the most famous finger. It's the tallest finger, the longest finger, and the most famous finger. It is probably the most, the most commonly used finger amongst drivers. A lot of times when drivers get mad, they use that finger to show the other person that they're mad. It is the finger of attitude, the finger of emotional expression, the finger of rudeness. This finger can make people fight, can make people angry, can make people happy. You know, like this funny way people do it in America. Like they may play jokes on you like, <sighs> something like that, or <coughs> something like that. So there's many ways for people, or there's even one way like this. Like there's many different ways people may show you the middle finger when they're being creative. But you know what your friends is funny, but with people who you don't know, it's not funny and they will definitely take it to offense and it could have some it could make some problems for you, whether a fight or who knows what it could be. So that is the middle finger. Excellent. Next body part. I know everybody was waiting for that. Now, this is something boys should know. These four things here. These four things. One, two, three, four. Those four things that are used when punching. What are those? Anyone know what these four things are? The four bones here. Oh, no one knows. Really? Go ahead and Google it. I want to see who's first. Ankle. No, not ankle. Well, I'll give it to you. Those are your knuckles. These are your knuckles. These are your knuckles. Now, boxers and stuff like that, whenever they go out and train, they protect their knuckles with hand wraps or gloves. These are your knuckles. Whenever you fight, usually when people fight, they try to hit people with their knuckles, okay? Let me show you an example of somebody who's real good with hitting with his knuckles. Uh, okay, let me show you real quick. Uh, one of the, oh yeah, this is awesome, okay? Now, hitting with your knuckles is called a punch. When you're hitting with your knuckles, that is called a punch, okay? So if you hit like this, that's not a punch. If you hit like this, that's not a punch. If you hit like this, that's not a punch. Like this, that's not a punch. It's only a punch when using your knuckles. And a perfect example of someone who knows how to use his knuckles is uh, this man here. He has one of the Fedor. A lot of you know Fedor. He's really, really good with his knuckles, and he knows how to hit very, very hard. And in this fight, he hits pretty damn hard, as he always does. He hits very hard. You can hear it when he hits, because it's the sound is loud. Listen. Seven thousand six hundred twenty-nine of the Saitama Super Arena. Are waiting now. See, that's a punch with his knuckles, okay? And when you when you hit with the knuckles, it is called a punch. It is one of the hardest ways that people can hit, okay? Excellent. So let's move on. Those are the knuckles. Next one we're gonna move on to is this part of the hand. Yes, that is the palm of the hand. That is a palm. The palm is famous because people, uh, I'm pretty sure they do it in Russia too, but where I'm from in New York, sometimes you see people on the street trying to do this, trying to be um, psychics. And they try to read your palm. They try to read your palm and basically tell your future by looking at your palm. You know, I, I'm not into that stuff at all, but a lot of people seem to really be into it for whatever reason. Let me show you a video. So they try to read your palm. Because on everyone's palm, you know, there's, there's different things on it. There's different things, like different lines. So see, I have three lines, basically, on my palm. I have three lines. And some people may say, 
This line is about money. This line is about life. This line is about love. Whatever, whatever. But all of that is a part of your palm, okay? That simple. When you hit with your palm like that, that's called a slap. It's called a slap. And oh, wait, I can show you a great example of a slap. A great example of a slap. Oh, man, where is it? Where is it? A great example of a slap. This is my favorite slap in history. My favorite slap in history. Some guy slaps another guy with his palm. It is my favorite slap in history. Let me find it. Давайте, давайте, покажи. Here, my favorite slap. Слушайте. All right, look, here it is. It's coming. Look. See that? One more time. <laughs> he, <laughs> he slapped him so hard that the guy saluted him. That's a slap. And you slap with your palm, okay? Palm right here, when you use it, it's called a slap. Now, you all... Uh, you all know what the palm is now, but it's not only used for slapping. We also do the face palm with our palms. Also the face palm, like when you're embarrassed or you feel bad for someone or your friend does something stupid, just, you know, or when you're just ashamed, just, uh, you know, it's just, those are face palms, okay? Because your face goes into your palm. Face palm. So easy, so simple, so basic. Davai, let's continue, okay? Now we got Fingers, palm, blah, blah, blah. How about we get... Oh, uh, yeah, that's a face palm. I didn't even put that. Who put that? That was cool. I didn't even do that. Excellent. But that was good. Face palm. Now let's get to this thing right here. It allows your, your hand to rotate. Right? Yes, the wrist. The wrist. Yes, the wrist. That is the wrist. Now the wrist is important with certain things. The wrist is used a lot when you're doing frisbee. Frisbee. Let me find frisbee. Frisbee. Let me find it. Yeah, when you're doing frisbee, it's really important to know how to use your wrist because you have to flick things with it and stuff like that. I'll show you a quick video as I talk with the sound off. These are people using the frisbee. Now, when you use the frisbee, goddamn. Where, where's it? This ain't frisbee. Let me see. Okay, see the frisbee in his hand? When he tosses it, he's going to use his wrist. Now, when you throw it, you flick your wrist in a certain way for the stuff to fly out properly. So he's going to do another one. Just look carefully. When he throws it, you see his wrist? His wrist is just, just rolls that out there. So use your, lot, use your wrist a lot for frisbee. You may use it a lot for um, yo-yos and stuff too. Okay, let's look at one more trick shot. One more. Let's see what he does. See, the wrist is all in the wrist. Oh, cool. Okay, so that's an example of using your wrist on in the uh, in the game of frisbee. I don't know how many of you actually play frisbee, but it's very important. And not only this with frisbee, is also good. Uh, is also good when shooting a basketball. It is also important when you're shooting a basketball as well. When you shoot a basketball, you're supposed to use your wrist because your wrist helps you to aim and throw the ball properly. So examples, let's see. Okay, look at some three-pointers. Now when people shoot in the NBA, they use their wrist like this. See, their wrist is what's really throwing the ball. They're not using their arms. They go up in their wrist. The wrist is what allows the ball to fly. You got to know how to use your wrist. You got to exercise your wrist in order to shoot the ball properly and more accurately. And with using less energy, basically, okay? That is using your wrist. Excellent. One more shot. One more. See? Beautiful. Oh, uh, he missed. Oh, no, he didn't. Sorry, but it was beautiful. Beautiful shot. 
Excellent. That's using your wrist. Next one. Next body part we're going to get to. We're going to get to right here. Right here. The bone right here. Yes. That is your elbow. That is your elbow. Now, how are elbows used in a special way? Oh, wait. Sorry. One second. Give me a second. Uh, elbow. Yes. Now, how are elbows used? Well, they use a lot to dance. Like, I remember Ludacris had this dance. And he was throw them. It was called throw them bows. You're supposed to throw them bows. And it was a dance in which Ludacris was like throwing his elbows. I remember that. It, it was a it was a while ago. Let me let me see if I can show you guys how to throw them bows. Okay, let's see. For pitching, yeah, for pitching a ball, I never really pitched the ball, so I don't know. But I, I'm guessing you're right. This is uh, see, he's throwing his bows. Get it on the floor. You throw your elbows. It's an old dance. So this whole song. This whole song was about throwing your elbows. It was a dance he had a long time ago, and it's called Throw Them Bows, all right? When you throw them bows, you're throwing your elbows, okay? Let's see. Excellente. Simple. Let's move on because we're running out of time. We have to get as many body parts in as we can. Okay, next one, we're going to try to do... Uh, all right. Right here. All this. I, you see the tan line? You see the tan line? But no, just here. What part of the body is this? Yes. That is the chest. The chest. That is the chest. Now, it's chest for men and women. It is chest for men and women. Yeah, not breast. Not in this case. But okay, it's chest. But let's say I was really big and fat. If I were really big and fat, some people would joke with me and say I have breasts. That happens, but because I'm not um, in like that, it's called the chest. You no, know, just normal chest. Guys have chest. Girls have chest. Everyone has a chest. But when you can do a certain thing with your chest, they become pecs. For example, I can move my chest. All right, smatrita. Okay, see. And once you're capable of doing that, they can also be called pecs when they are muscular and you can move them they could be known as pecs so when it's normal you have a chest but when they're muscular and you can move them like one two one two make them dance they could be known as pecs so most wrestlers have pecs p-e-c-k-s they have pecs because their chest is very strong and they can move it one after another after another. Now, I'm pretty sure only guys can do that. I don't think girls can do that. I hope girls can't do that. Well, well, no, it's different with girls. But if, if a girl has a, a, if she has a muscular chest and she can move it like I move mine, that's weird. But I think girls can do it, but it's not so obvious. It moves a little bit. But anyway, you don't need to do it, girls. Girls can just shake their shoulders, and that's much better. Guys... One, two, one, two, but girls can do all this. That's better. You understand? So, yeah, that's that. That is chest, or when it's muscular, it can also be known as pecs. All right? Excellent. Now, let's see. How about the, let's do right here. What is this right here? Right here. Yes, that is your throat. Very good maniac. Maniac? Who the hell is a maniac? Very good maniac. That is your throat. Uh, secundo. That is your throat. I don't know how many of you watch. Um, how many of you watch the TV show House? But it's a good TV show. Except you know they 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 speak doctor language, and I have no idea what they're talking about most of the time. But in the show, they had a girl called Cutthroat Bitch. Let me write it. Cut throat. Now, when someone calls you cut throat, that means you don't care about anything. You do not care about anything but yourself. And when you're cut throat, you are ruthless. Very, very ruthless. So this is your throat. 
But when you are an aggressive person, you're very selfish, and you only care about yourself, you are a cutthroat. So being cutthroat is not a good thing. Being cutthroat is uh, just basically being very selfish, and you hurt other people to get what you want, okay? So this is the throat right here, right here. This is the throat. Now, not only that, but is this the throat, but what's interesting is some men have something right here. Like, you can't really see mine, but a lot of men have something right here that you can see on their throat. Yes, that's the Adam's apple. They have it right here. I don't have an Adam's apple, but let me find somebody with a big Adam's apple. I, I don't mind. You can't really see mine. Let's see. Adam's apple. No, no good videos with Adam's apples. No, no good ones. But yeah, basically. Oh, here it is. Well, Jesus Christ. Yeah, a lot of Asians have them. A lot of Asians have them. Here it is. Now, this guy has a big Adam's apple, and I should write it. You see, his Adam's apple is huge, really big. He, 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 like he has two of them. What the hell is that? How the hell he got a big-ass Adam's apple like that? That's creepy. I don't know how many girls. Are, it's not, it's, you know, I really don't know what the hell it is. I don't know if it's a muscle. I don't know. I just know it looks creepy as hell. Disgusting apple? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is. I never researched it. I just know it looks weird to me. And you can move it. I, I don't feel anything in mind. No, I don't really have that. You could choke the hell out of somebody. Just choke the hell out of them if they have an Adam's apple. It should actually be easier for you, okay? Disgusting feature? I guess it's disgusting. Some girls like it. Some girls like uh, a guy with an Adam's apple. Now, women shouldn't have Adam's apples, guys. Women should not have Adam's apples. So when you go to Thailand and you're in Thailand and you're like, oh, this woman's so beautiful, I wonder why she has this Adam's apple. It might be because that's not a woman, all right? Not a woman if she has Adam's apple. So be careful, all right? Yes, be careful. Jesus. Oh, this girl I was kissing yesterday was so beautiful, except for some reason she had an Adam's apple. I was like, well, maybe because her name is Adam. Her name is Adam, dude. If she has an Adam's apple, don't kiss her, all right? Uh, unless you want to. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But I'm just telling you, if you want to kiss a woman, Adam's apple is there. You're kissing Adam and not Eve. You understand? Now let's move on. Okay. Uh, next, let's see. Anything else on the face I forgot? Oh, how about like all this facial hair I have here on the bottom, basically. All this facial hair. All this facial hair. Goatee, kind of, but including this too. All of this kind of. Goatee. Goatee could just be this, but I mean all of it. Yes, all of it together is basically the beard. Now, out here in Russia, and probably the same in America, out here in Russia, what the hell? Be uh, we're in the wrong place. Out here in Russia, um, whenever I grow a beard, like people think I'm Muslim. Whenever I get a big one, they think I'm Muslim. So sometimes I walk through the street and people will say salam to me and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, but sometimes they say salam. I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know, because they think I'm Muslim sometimes when I grow a beard. I, I'm not exactly sure because that's never happened in America. No one's ever thought I was a Muslim because I had a beard in America. But here in Russia, when I grow a beard, sometimes they think I'm Muslim. It's very interesting. I got to grow a bigger beard so I can look even more Muslim and people will be afraid to talk to me. That will be fun. Because people talk to me too much in Russia. Always ask me a million questions. But, yeah, that's your beard. In Russian, it's called Barada. And, um, yeah, it's out here is really associated with Islam. A lot of Caucasians. I don't think uh, Tajikistan people usually grow beards that much. But out here, you know, like the Chechens and the Ar Armenians aren't Muslim. They're Christian. But like the Armenians and stuff, you know, the, the Kafkus people, they're known to have beards out here. Like Kadyrov, he has like the, he has like, oh, it's not that big. But he's, you know, one of the famous people with beards, okay? Black guys can be Muslim generally this, uh, this way. Yeah, that's true. Black guys can be. But in Russia, I just get the whole Muslim question more than I've ever gotten in America 
when I have a beard. Excellent. Let's see. Anything I forgot? Um, maybe I should teach something you guys don't know. Oh, yes. Let's talk about right here. The part of the body right here. When you're tired and you see this. Girls don't like the, yes, eye bags. Or also, yes, eye bags. Those are your bags of the eyes. The, they're the bags of the eyes. Now, you can see the bags of the eyes usually when someone's sleepy. After they finish using a lot of energy. It's like if you go to the gym and you work out, you exercise for like two hours. When you go look in the mirror, you're going to see bags under your eyes. The bags of your eyes will show. The bags of the eyes will be showing. Now, not only that, a lot of girls don't like having bags under their eyes. That's why they wear so much makeup under the eye to make themselves look healthier, younger, and more energetic. They don't want to look sleepy, tired, and all that stuff. Those are the bags under the eyes. And in Ebonics, in uh, black American slang, not the eyelid. No, the eyelid is up here. The bags are down here. These are the bags of your eyes. Um, uh, what's it going to say? Oh, and in Ebonics, it's common to call them money bags. Yeah, those must be some. No, it doesn't mean there's a problem with your kidneys. It's only a problem with your kidneys if you always have bags under your eyes. If you always have them, then yes, there could be a problem with the kidneys. But anybody gets bags under their eyes when they're tired, maybe when they're drunk. Maybe when they're uh, just just finished doing some extreme activity, they have bags under their eyes a lot. And when they're really nervous too, they get bags under their eyes. Um, panda eyes. Panda eyes. I've never heard that. But in Ebonics, we call them money bags. Money bags. Because a lot of people from the ghetto or the hood where I'm from, when they uh, do things to make money, they do it a lot. They do it so much they can't even sleep. So when you are awake for like two or three days straight, and you're making money, you can call them money bags. So they're like, these are money bags under my eyes. I didn't sleep for three days. I'm just making money. These are money bags right here. That shows how much money I'm making, okay? So if you work a lot, you don't sleep a lot because you're always working, working, you got money bags under your eyes because that's how much, that's how much, that's how serious you are about making your money. You don't even sleep that much, okay? So uh, the longest I ever went without sleeping was in Russia. It was in the city of uh, Vladivostok. I went four days without sleeping, four days straight without sleeping, and we partied every night, and I had classes every day. Four days straight, no sleep. I will never forget that. It was bad. I was literally sleeping. I was literally at a dinner. The last night before I went to sleep, uh, I was at a dinner with a bunch of guys and a bunch of girls, and I literally at the table just did this. At the table. I, I couldn't, they tried to wake me up. I go, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. I was so sleepy, and trust me, I had money and party bags under my eyes because I was partying all the time, all right? Now let's do one more because we only have four minutes left. Let's do something interesting. Oh, right here. Sometimes it smells full if you don't put on deodorant. Yes, those are your armpits. That is your armpit. Now, your armpit is an important part of your body. Here's a question I want to ask about the armpit. At what age do you think the armpit typically starts to smell? What age does a child have to be where the armpit starts to smell? Because you know what? A lot of parents don't notice their children's armpit smell. They don't notice it because they're used to it. And a lot of times I teach kids and I smell their armpits and I'm like, God damn. They don't realize this yet? At what age? Does anyone know what age do armpits usually start to smell? Maybe 12, maybe 11. I really don't know. Maybe 13 or something. 15. Oh, 15. Uh, maybe younger. Well, well, it depends on the person. That's true. But maybe average. I, I think like 13 on average. You know, when they first reach puberty, about 13 years old. Or, All right, 14. Somewhere around there, because some of these kids, they their armpits are talking. Their armpits are talking, but nobody's hearing it. I am. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, I don't say anything. I don't say anything to them. But sometimes I smell it, and I'm like, damn, these these the parents don't realize that their their children are maturing, and you know their armpits. And this is in Russia. This is in America. This is everywhere where there's kids. 
young kids, like 12, 11, 13, 14, a lot of times they don't have deodorant. Like this is mine. Like this is mine here. This is Gillette. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's Gillette 24 hours. Sorry, that's my camera. My camera's going crazy. But yeah, this is mine. Gillette is a good brand to use for your armpit. But other than that, um, yeah, excellent, guys. So that's the end of the lesson for today. I would love for you guys to use the last three minutes we have to ask me any questions you might have in the comment section. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with my camera today, but I think uh, next time we have a lesson, my camera won't be going so crazy. I will restart my computer before the lesson. What questions do you guys have? Now is the time to ask. Yes, at puberty. Ah, this is good juice. Have you ever thought for a hair transplant? I don't want a hair transplant. I don't even want hair. It's too hot. In Russia, armpit smell. In Russia, armpit smells you. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Any other questions? There's 71 of you. If you have any questions, go for it. 